Welcome. We start straight with the big story this hour. India has hit back at Pakistan at the UNHRC. Now, in the latest, Indian diplomat Vimash Aryan, who hails from Jammu and Kashmir, has responded to Pakistan's lies. Exercising its right to reply, India has said that Pakistan's rhetoric will not distract international attention from gross human right violations against religious and ethnic minorities. India has reiterated that blatant abuse of blasphemy laws in Pakistan to persecute minorities is well documented. In its strong rebuttal, India said that as far as the OIC is concerned, it has no locus standi to comment on the internal affairs of India. Now, the recent incidents of abduction, forced conversion and marriages were also brought up at the UNHRC. Now, India categorically stated that the incident exemplifies the state of women from minority com communities in Pakistan. Pakistan has the audacity to tell others about human rights that it so egregiously violates again and again. Mr. President, as regards OIC, it has no local standard to comment on the internal affairs of India. Jammu and Kashmir has been, is and shall continue to be an integral part of India. Pakistan's nefarious designs will never succeed because the people of Jammu and Kashmir are united in their determination to preserve our territorial integrity along with our core values of democracy, tolerance and unity and diversity. Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh will continue to progress and prosper along with the rest of India. It defies credibility that Pakistan, which is the epicenter of global terrorism, is claiming to speak on behalf of unnamed other countries on the issue of human rights. It forgets that terrorism is the worst form of human rights abuse. <laughs> Earlier in the day, a point-by-point -point rebuttal, Indian envoy Vijay Thakur Singh told, uh, has too called out Imran Khan's government uh, on hypocrisy on shielding terrorists. Now, she had highlighted that India's commitment to democracy remains unshakable, while Pakistan continues to be the epicenter of terror, which pushes cross-border terror as alternative diplomacy. Now, however, she elaborated that it was time to collectively act against the menace of terrorism. The decisions were taken by our parliament after a fully televised debate and enjoys widespread support. These were sovereign decisions, entirely internal to India. No country can accept interference in its internal affairs, certainly not India. Despite challenging circumstances, Jammu and Kashmir civil administration is ensuring basic services, essential supplies, mobility and connectivity. Democratic processes have been initiated. Restrictions are being eased continuously. Temporary preventive measures were needed to ensure security in the face of credible threats of cross-border terrorism. One delegation here has given a running commentary with offensive rhetoric of false allegations and concocted charges against my country. The world is aware that this fabricated narrative comes from the epicenter of global terrorism, where ringleaders are sheltered for years. This country conducts cross-border terrorism as a form of alternate diplomacy. Now, our principal diplomatic correspondent, Sudan Sibyl, joins us for more on this. Good evening to you, Sudan. A very strong rebuttal from India. Take us through some of the main points that were given during India's right of reply. Well, yes, Alison, it was a pretty long day in Geneva. India's, uh, uh, ex uh, India's uh, Secretary East replied first. Uh, she spoke uh, on India's statement and uh, highlighted two important issues. One, of course, the issue of cross-border terrorism. And second, uh, on the rationale behind uh, the removal of special status uh, for the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir, she said that uh, that will help spur economic uh, and uh, social development of the region. But just a short while ago, India formally replied uh, to the statement made by the Pakistani uh, foreign minister, uh, India's diplomat, uh, responding uh, to his, uh, his uh, raking up Kashmir. On two points, he uh, highlighted what Pakistan has been doing. One, of course, the issue of uh, cross-border terrorism. He said that uh, terrorism is the worst form of uh, human rights violation. Second, on the persecuted minorities in Pakistan, he gave examples of Aisha Bibi and uh, the ex recent example of Jigjit Kaur. Uh, the Sikh minor girl who was abducted and converted to Islam, he said that instead of talking about other countries, Pakistan should look inside and what Pakistan has been doing. So pretty much India was able to slam and of course uh, highlight the propaganda Pakistan was doing at the United Nations Human Rights Council. So Dan, you referred to the, uh, the clear hypocrisy of uh, Pakistan's statement. 
especially with re regards to the minorities. Now take us through what does this mean then for um, Pakistan's latest attempt to try and internationalize this issue in Jammu and Kashmir? Well, another failed attempt by Pakistan at Global Forum. First, uh, we saw what happened at the United Nations Security Council on 16th of August when Pakistan and China tried to internationalize Kashmir, hoping that there will be an emergency session on Kashmir. It did not happen. Then again today, Pakistan's entire propaganda machinery failed. So much so, it was an embarrassment for the Pakistani Foreign Minister himself who acknowledged that Jammu and Kashmir is an Indian state. So he went there to embarrass India, but he ended up embarrassing himself and of course India was able to give point by point rebuttal on Pakistan what Pakistan has been doing whether it's support to terrorism or whether the situation of minorities in its own country in fact India highlighted how there are Pakistani uh, leaders who are now calling for jihad against India thank you very much for that report that was Sadan Sibyl our principal diplomatic correspondent bringing us the latest from the UN HRC